and welcome uh, uh, everyone and this is the seventh i think episodes of uh, the graveyard of Tekonin, where we uh, drink tea and uh, re revive old websites now um we i don't have much time today so i figured that i will try to do something that's uh, a bit smaller and uh, doesn't have many dependencies on um uh, on infrastructure, uh, so you know we don't spend uh, our whole time hunting Heroku again. Uh, of note, uh, last time we have ended with uh, th the problems about sending emails, and um, I have figured out the cause. I have tried to restart the plugin, and apparently uh, it cost removal and uh, re-edition of plugin cost me to get banned. Uh, so I will have to figure out either a different Sangrid account or. Um, some other provider. I have wrote them a support ticket. They haven't replied, so no idea what could have caused that. Um, but um, I'll this this apparently requires more. Um, let's say managerial solution than technical solution. So uh, let's go there. I mean, if it wouldn't work, uh, then I will set up. Um, the send the sending account on Amazon, and uh, we'll just uh, send the emails through the uh, Amazon account uh, account that I have. But um, uh, you know, for the reasons I've mentioned last time, uh, I would prefer sending emails as a service because that's something that's uh, uh, sending email is easy. Uh, making sure someone receives your email uh, is actually kind of hard. Um, so, you know, it's, it's worth um, getting it managed and uh, eventually pay some money for it. All right. So one issue that uh, caught my mind that should be um, reasonably easy um, should be supporting the HTML and, uh, well, <laughs> easy-ish and educational. Uh, should be this ticket about so, uh, supporting for HTML range for original page. So... Um, if you, uh, if you remember, if you've been in one of those first episodes, um, the way original page stores data is that it, uh, just cover, uh, converts all the HTML text to entities and saves that to database. Um, this I would say is an entity pattern. Um, uh, the way, uh, software should work is that you sanitize all the data based on the input you're getting. Uh, so, you know, the user data uh, before saving it, uh, you figure out how to sanitize all the hostile inputs and then um, s store the uh, original, the, the HTML version, uh, and that you can then display. Now, um, nothing I can do about that. <laughs> so, um, Again, we will need to do a multi-step upgrade. So first, uh, figuring out how to display what we have in the database. And then uh, once we cut off the original version, uh, we can potentially um, cut it off and uh, convert for everything that's in database. Now, we do have access to the original uh, file, I hope. So uh, there is one um for for some reason um my mac insists that the error screen is the main screen and um shows the alt tab for that so um in our case um let me just look it up the way we are currently displaying um texts in creative pages um is that it may be actually done on model huh let me refresh um so in the used in creations we do have uh for articles at least uh, oh, that's common article. Uh, 
um so description is where the um, actual text is or here uh, text which again uh, also you know we're working through that uh, encoding problem so we are not uh, escaping it here uh, let me see how have I sold that HTML that sounds yep familiar so uh, HTML encode to URL okay. all right so um, there is an algorithm uh, that is uh, terrible but somehow working but doesn't doesn't work uh, with the full range of text apparently uh, if you look at the production page uh, so what I wanted to do is to dissect the uh, find out and dissect the original algorithm um, to see uh, whether we can migrate it uh, in some reasonable way uh, so if we take a look um, what would be a good example? I mean, we can always do this stash, uh, monster, monster, uh, monster manual. Uh, so if I take a look at what's in, and also, mind you, this is Windows encoding. Um, when we are displaying the actual text somewhere, which is here oh so there is uh, one function for excessive uh, excessive removal of flashes which is I think caused by us not really knowing how to uh, how to how to escape um, all the inputs properly so there may be excessive slashes that are then removed here and uh, then this is the function we are looking for. And because this is PHP and it doesn't have a reasonable uh, function, um, like import structure, I wasn't sure in which file it, uh, file it is, but it's here. Um, oh, wow, cool. This is going to be fun. And let me just also take a look at what the strip slash is. is. Um, okay, it's going to be elsewhere, or is it the built-in PHP function? Uh, let me check because I'm not sure. Um, oh, okay, uncoated a coated string. Who? Hmm, not present in PHP 6, interesting. Okay, um, let me just close the door since I'm not alone here. So this is, this is one of the intricacies of PHP. Um, if I do remember this correctly, yep. So based on the PHP runtime settings, uh, you when you um, get a string that was deemed potentially problematic, like for example, for inclusion in a database, uh, which would be f uh, like apostrophe because that could be a string terminator and like SQL commands terminator. Then um, if you had a directive called magic quotes keep GPC on, uh, then 
whenever, for example, f uh, when you received user input, so for example, form was submitted, you automatically get that backslash. So if you haven't wanted to, you had to strip it. And if you had it on and used escaping, so like you, you use the bad combination of runtime settings and your code, that's how you could have uh, ended up with those double backslashes, which is what you're trying to fix here now. Uh, I now do wonder I, I, I now do wonder whether uh, this could be replaced with a relatively simple regular expression or whether there was more that was into this. Um, this will require further research. But uh, so first, let's start. Um, let's start with the parsing. So let's see how it was originally done. Um, so what we have done here is that we have we have had a whitelisted set of tags. Um, I. Th yeah, that were in the escaped form and were replaced with the unescaped form. Globally in the whole string, uh, in which the previous escaping doesn't hasn't really made sense. Okay, uh, and this was um. There are two functions in PHP for replacing. Uh, so. E stands for a particular version of regular expression and I stands for case insensitive. Um, and because this is not really a regular expression but basically just a string replacement, which would be useful to do anyway instead. Um, yeah, when, when there was like, the, what, where, where do you, when you wanted to accept um, multiple forms of the text, they had to be enumerated. Poof. Um. I somehow had a feeling that there was also uh, there was also um, control for parity of the text and whatnot, um, but seems like that was done on input, so we can sort it out later. In which case, this function is unnecessarily complicated. Um, let me bring more of it to your viewport. Um, I think that the reason is that in here I'm actually trying to check for parities. Which isn't in the original code. Um, which I mean it should be, but then uh, we are again... Uh, um, alternating the code behavior. So... Maybe the correct version of this for V1 is to just... Uh, have this as an encoding on safe because that's what was th this is actually w what I'm trying to do here unknowingly uh, like I'm encoding valid HTMLs but on output I should just replace 
the whitelisted tags uh, in a similar form as, as it is there. Hmm. Now the downsides, I mean, this is only problematic if uh, there is some uh, like offending uh, attacker stored HTML in the database um, that I would skip for sanitizing this way, uh, but this we could check relatively easily. Uh, with, with a function. I just do wonder, one thing that I'm not sure about is how does this handle stuff like uh, images with attributes. Let me look it up. Hmm. Because this only handles simple text. So, you know, uh, by simple I mean adult text without any attributes. Uh, so for example, you don't see IMG here, uh, which I'm quite sure is allowed. So I do not wonder how that was done. The strips of shoes that were done afterwards. Huh. So this is maybe worse than I thought. Because the way this looks like is that uh, all of those unoffended ducks are actually unnecessarily encoded into tags, whereas the ones with attributes where you can actually do um, some nested or site scripting stuff is stored as HTML? That would be fun. Um, okay, so I mean, let's look how saving is handled. Uh, which I think is what this should do. Um, maybe we'll end up with more uh, PHP than Python this time. So yes, this is doing the explicit at slashes that you're then removing, which um, is kind of weird. But uh, here we are insert inserting. Anyway, that's totally not a skill safe. Uh, I mean, a skill injection safe. But let me look up this function. So this is the one we are doing on saving. And in saving, we are just turning everything into special characters. Well, this makes me think whether actually those images were supported. from the user sites um, because uh, let's take a look in the in updating of the uh, um, like in the admin interface um, because also the logic that we've employed is that we can trust uh, admins more than common users not to try to hack the site at least so um, in here uh, 
in here we are adding the text and it seems that only add slashes is added okay so it looks like those were had to be added by admins and um, admins so like the, the original source code Poof. Cool. So I mean, this means that uh, if you think about what can be in the data in the database, it's a combination of the whitelisted characters. Uh, I mean, whitelisted uh, HTML tags that are escaped to be. Uh, that are escaped to be to, to use entities instead and then everything that uh, requires attributes um, had to be entered manually by admins I mean there is a way to test it but uh, I guess we should account for both cases. So that's fun. So uh, let me just check. But th this, th yeah. This looks like the same list. Um, that we saw before um, except the way it was handled before is that we are just um, we are just replacing them so I'm thinking whether to go down the same route or not but uh, since we are currently not adding more into the system then like if there if there w would be cross site scripting, then people could already exploit that through the original site. Um, and I also know that people have been trying with like proper software, and uh, they haven't succeeded in that. Um, they have succeeded in other parts. Hmm. <laughs> Let's make a leaf for that. Mm. I'm thinking that, uh, it, it, like in in the current case, the the sanitizing to entities actually serves no practical purpose. Uh, it's like that there is nothing this adds to security. Um, because all of the tags that are whitelisted, um, especially if you can't use attributes, they can't be reasonably uh, attacked. So there is a question whether we sh shouldn't just convert all of this uh, in the database in its current state. Um, and the answer is that we can't, as long as people use the original site uh, for adding new stuff. Um, which I think they very very occasionally, but they still do. Uh, so let's still do this um, only after we shut down uh, the original version. In which case, though, um, Let's probably simplify the function. So, d 
this calls for removal of all of that. Yeah, I probably complete the removal because actually even in the future, if we are going to do, go down the route of uh, sanitizing, then uh, the first rule of HTML sanitization is never do it yourself. Um, there are libraries, uh, you should always use those libraries. Um, the parsing of HTML is complicated in itself. Um, so also if you can, don't expect HTML as an input. Um, yeah, there weren't many markup languages back then. Um, and I mean, even now, uh, the problem with a lot of markup languages is that they're optimized for English keyboards. Uh, and when people are not on them, they may not have all the special characters available. Um, at which point you're either uh, creating your own markup language, uh, which I've actually tried, or uh, you, you know, you're sending uh, your users down the very on, uh, down the path with the learning curve. Let's go this way. Uh, so alternatively, of course, you 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 can use uh, you know GUIs, but then uh, creating your own text editor um, is not exactly trivial, and there are few that you can use, but um, they also have their issues actually. So this is still not a completely solved problem, I think, uh, for non-English. That is, um, some 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 of them. I mean, so, some of them are usable. Um, but I still think that you know, there, there is a reason why a lot of uh, content-heavy sites develop their own editor for that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we also should have tests for this. Yep. So let's just see whether we can run them. Also, we should probably so, uh, sort those issues. This looks like a problem. Uh, but let's not get distracted. Uh, so, uh, test and one we are going for. Oh, it's actually here. Hmm. So I can't use file, just directory. Okay. Uh, so apparently the argument uh, has to be towards module and not file. Can I do this? Cool. Um, so plain text work. We do have vault text working. We do have HR. And this is where I stopped back then. Um, Of note, uh, what should be covered in the, the test is exactly what um, we are going to say that we are currently going to turn a bl blind eye on, but it is like ex excess attributes and whatnot. Um, although, I mean, some of that. We will show, so let's say that's um, 
Someone would try go and do B on click. Um, JavaScript script alert. Um, and then uh, have full text. So currently what should happen is that uh, the first part is going to be unencoded and the second part is going to do slash b. Right, this is the downside of... Okay. Uh, so, our parser is actually smart and doesn't include this. Um, which is what you would expect. Uh, I'm forward thinking towards our uh, dumb parser because If I think about it correctly, the original parser would skip the first B but keep the end B because it doesn't check for uh, tag parity. And that's actually what may be causing the... Um, that's, that's actually what may be causing the differences between our parsers. <sighs> I mean, also, let's check whether this is actually uh, doing the breaks that you saw. My guess is no. And that's where we are going to have our first serious problem. Wait, uh, so this is only about the input, but uh, this went well. Uh, right, but those two hasn't went well. Which is uh, slash, yes we have, and uh, wait, bait slash, which were like, this is there because the site has been trying to be uh, XHTML compliant back in the days, um, which is something that uh, was then collectively dropped as a good idea. Um, but there are results, th th there are leftovers um, around the site. Hmm. Well, also. Uh, it should actually be in this form. And the question is now whether to continue developing the parser that I've put, uh, that, uh, well, parser uh, that I have started doing or just drop all of this and um, be happy with the, uh, let's say, optimistic variant. And I'm going to say that let's uh, let's go with the optimistic variant uh, for time being. Um, For text, though, like for the trustful input that went through review, I would say. Well, 
what is running through my mind is that what uh, what would actually be like a proper proper sanitized way uh, would be to construct a script that would run uh, all of the data through the original parser, like the PHP parser, and then uh, compare it with the results of our parser and show us uh, where the differences are, whether we are fixing stuff or whether we are, you know, unbeknowingly letting um, malformed and potentially malicious uh, input in. Um. So I'm saying that for um, so maybe let's keep this. This may be useful for. Um, encoding commands and let's do encode valid um, creation HTML and that one I will get an entity string and um, uh, so take string with HTML entities and naively turn all whitelisted tags uh, well whitelisted encoded HTML tags into their unencoded version doesn't Check for tag parity. Uh, and doesn't encode any well doesn't touch the rest of the HTML doesn't accept any attributes, that's the main point. Um, so use only for creation Pages text uh, that went through admin review, and since you're doing that, um, let's mark it as unsafe, just so everyone knows what they're getting into. All right. So and copy pasting is generally a bad idea, but since it's an independent parser with the same start that you're going to modify, uh, I would say that it's actually deserved here. And the old parser is currently not expected to handle those variants. Um, but we will be. And in this case, we are uh, testing unsafe HTML render. Uh, what we are expecting is, what we are going to use is the unsafe and on, um, and propagate it. Do we have all somewhere? No. Uh, and and propagate it. Unsafe function. Um, this is the one we're going to use to test everything. 
and those should hold those should hold wait I'm saying this is not lowercase and naming is uh, important so let's also actually fix it here stuff you discover when you look at things properly um, non pair accepted and the break variants okay so let's start with that Alright, so this is expected since, since we're just returning uh, whatever input we got. Um, let's actually write some code. Uh, so what was happening there was that... We blindly took... Okay, we blindly took... Um, the tux in that form uh, let me actually look at that so we took um, both pair and non pair tux in this form and then uh, the only exception is that br was accepted in those multiple forms uh, in those uh, X HTML forms and I am saying let's do this for all non-pair text. Um, so we do have whitelisted text list, but we don't have them sorted by um, we don't have them sorted by paired or non-paired. Okay. Uh, so let's work through that, uh, but uh, give me a moment uh, to recharge, so I'll be back in five minutes. Well, let's continue on previous thought, if I can find it. Um, we could have just to replace on all tags, but if we want support various forms, uh, we need to make a distinction between pair and non-pair tags. Now, as a start, we can just do a replace on the on all whitelisted tag list and Let me see whether there is a case insensitive, insensitive uh, string replace because um, I mean we could use um, we could use regular expressions, uh, but actual regular expre expressions are usually slower than string called replace. Um, because you know regex is just a full-blown uh, language uh, but the string code place is hmm. the problem is that the replace is not as far as I can tell, case insensitive. Just a sec. Uh, just for the record. All right. Um, so string by replace is not case insensitive, it seems, and doesn't have a flag to do so. 
which I mean makes sense uh, but in that case um, we need the regular expression module and in there is the dot uh, sub I think uh, for substring uh, where do you have it? Yeah, yeah. Regular syntax, uh, regular expression syntax, useful and terrible. Um, pattern replacement string. Um, and we don't care about tax and what are the flex that we are interested in. Um, is that going to be somewhere up? Objects, examples, topics. Oh, ignore case. This is exactly what we want. Perfect. So, um, um Ask a call, ignore case, local well, doesn't matter. Or oh, you will not be working with multi line. Okay. So. Um. For every tag in whitelisted tags, we want to replace um, a string composed of left entity plus tag plus right entity and replace it with um, the encoded version and we want to do the same um, right and replace it in the string because strings are immutable and we want to be iteratively working on the same string. Yeah, this is not optimal from performance perspective, but uh, shouldn't matter on our uh, text size. Um, but uh, of course to be improved, but actually best to be improved by you know, <laughs> skipping this functionality altogether. Uh, so this is for the opening tag. And uh, then also for the close uh, now for the closing form of the tech, which is unnecessary for the unpaired text, and what we can do is that we actually know whether this is pair or not. Uh, so if um, whitelisted tags, tag is, uh, we are saying 
pair false rights. Okay. Uh, so get pair and it's true by default. So if it's a pair tag, I'll replace it this way. And don't forget about that uh, re.i. Re okay. Um, have we import regular ex expression? We haven't. Also, for some reason, it refers to different function than this. So I hope I'm not doing it all wrong. Um, but this is a different function and what I do believe is it's going to be a function for the discussion. So let's look into it afterwards. Secure text. Cool, this looks more reasonable, but um, Unfortunately, unused on the code path that we've been looking at. But let's verify afterwards. So, uh, just edit then. Uh, just just document it because those are important archaeologist discoveries. Um, so this guy uh, PHP. So This should be enough for V1, except for the um, special versions of the uh, BR tag. So let's see where we made mistakes. So this missing a positional argument string. Um, that makes sense. Um, that it needs uh, the string uh, that we are pattern replacement string. Okay. Um, so it actually needs the string we are calling this on. Um, while this is running, uh, let's also make it more readable. Uh, I'm tempted to say uh, there is now a new package called black, I think. Well, I mean new, new for me. Uh, that just reformats the text and um, I like the idea. Um, I tend to structure the code in a similar way than, uh, than uh, as text, uh, so like into double white lines corresponding of paragraphs that kind of express how you move on with their thoughts. Um, but on anything larger, I mean, to just format it according to common, um, ac according to common uh, uh, rules uh, is necessary. So now we see that we forgot to add the slash to the replacement. So let's do that. And uh, 
right. Uh, we are not detecting the tag pairing, so it is actually correct that this would slip through. Um, also, I have just co overshadowed the test, so let's fix that. So, tag test um, attributes unsupported, but without um, pair check. And um, up there, this is what we should do instead. Let's see how it goes. Uh, yep, we don't see breaks, which is correct. So br slash and br I'm just uh, white space slash. So Since those are proper, since since those are proper uh, regular expressions, let's just handle handle those completely separately. So, pair tags uh, are going to be looked for and replaced, um, including end texts, and for non pair text text um, we are going after the tag name except optional white space and Uh, optional white space and uh, optional slash um, so let's see how that goes Great, except for bolt. And the reason for that is that right, uh, we have switched to lowercase. So that is actually correct in our version. When we are replacing, we are replacing to lowercase. And we're replacing the whole entity text. See how many typos you can make on a uh, few characters. It's awesome. Um, so since we have this, uh, I'm saying let's commit it. And definitely not on this branch. Um, I mean, let's pull and see whether we can afford it, but uh, my guess is yes. Um, right, wrong computer. So, let's commit this one. Uh, and we are make well, it's a chore. 
it doesn't have any uh, user impacting. Um, it doesn't have any user impact yet. So um, our chore is um, make more naive HTML parser uh, more compliant uh, original HTML on escaping. So let's push it to see whether we uh, don't have any. Um, we, we haven't broken anything obvious. Also, I need my dot files back. Um, oh, cool! And we have vulnerabilities that we should go check. Programming is always fun. Um, but before we do that. Um, we have made the function available, but we are not actually using it. Uh, we are using the encode valid HTML in templates. So let's see whether in um, templates text. We do have one global. Uh, HTML. The question is whether we want to keep it or to explicitly mark it as insecure. And um, I vote for the latter option actually. So let's make a second tack. Tech, um, that uses this uh, say render HTML insecurely. Uh, and use the same. Registration methods. So now if we go to templates and go to creative pages and go to common article detail because this is the one that's most used. Uh, so range HTML. Oh no, and HTML insecurely. Um, yeah, take a slow so there. Then um, concept no, epic no, 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 uh, monster detail. There is one, I think. Yep. Uh, I don't want to do a global research, uh, uh, global search and replace because actually in most cases for what we've done here, we don't want to use this more lenient version. It's really uh, on those few select uh, checked places. So this should do the trick um, unfortunately it's relatively hard to catch because it's all about you know going through history and see something obviously broken ba breaking basically uh, like our CSS skills um, but at least yeah. By skimming, it hasn't horribly broken anything. And
It also potentially hasn't fixed much, although... This looks like it's the way it was written. But uh, let's look it up on the original site. I mean, if this is indexed uh, on DuckDuckGo, which it actually is cool. That's not entirely expected. Yep, this looks like similar. Um, is there anything using more complicated HTML? This looks like tables. And HRs. And actual links. So let's see. Um, so let's see how it looks. So the links are there, even though we are not replacing them. So actually, a set. Uh, this is done by um, admins. There is the division line. And this looks like tables is there. So I'm declaring this a sufficient success with uh, all the limitations we are aware of. But um, Better than it was, you saw the images, so this is in as well. So yeah, we'll... This unfortunately works, fortunately, unfortunately. Um, yeah, looks good, I'm saying... Um, Let's push this to production. And um, today we will need to do the, we, we will need to think quite a bit about how people can submit data because this is only um, potentially getting worse. So, um, uh, so this is feature for creative uh, pages. Uh, switch to well, not better parser, but um, parser tracking more compliant parser. That's what it is. <laughs> um, so let's deploy him. Uh, see what Circle says. Besides getting a shit ton of new money. Cool. Well, okay. Um, this is new and uh, apparently not optimized for small windows. Uh, this will need shortcuts. So the previous one was running, um, oh sorry, working, this doesn't contain any new, 
Uh, this doesn't contain any new um, tested functionality, actually. So I say let's make a pull request out of it meanwhile. So make a channel parser more compliant with or with original. And let's just take a quick read. Um, so this is documented. Just uh, do I know that we are doing as many uh, regular expression passes as there are whitelisted stacks. Uh, it would be obviously pa faster to you know pre-qualify tags in. But as I've been saying, if you optimize on speed, uh, like the way to do this is to scratch all this together. Um, have a version we can rely on in database. And uh, on the do this on save, uh, which we are going to do once uh, you're sufficiently forward enough to call the original version. So, uh, supporting the breaks, I mean, you know, this is the typical, uh, I wrote it so it looks good. Where is the CI? Okay, so that's a success. So let's push the master. So let's push origin. And also let's delete our branch. Uh, on the origin at least. And um, this right Heroku, so this will also deploy. So let's check on that afterwards. Um, What is the f uh, are there any full ups left? Right, the slashes. Uh, so uh, follow up to do. Uh, check for uh, need for add slashes and um, make sure we are handling uh, checks on tech pairs on input correctly. So I would actually say that this is not done done. Um, but yeah, good enough for initial iteration. But yeah, let's follow up next time. And let's also just see about those vulnerabilities. Okay. Two to three or later. 
Sorry for my generated by foreign hero idea which were not properly URL encoded that we don't use in cases where memcache backend does not perform key validation passing more from cache keys could result in a key collision we are not using memcache at all yet one oh else is going to if untrusted data is used as a tolerance parameter in this functions and aggregates on Oracle. We are not using uh, Oracle nor GIS, so this doesn't. Uh, this is unrelated. Um, vulnerable code is not used. That's it. With the upgrades to, like with our ch RDS change, oh no, we, uh, I was about to say we may potentially upgrade to new or MySQL, um, but we, s we are still held back by that original PHP code. Um, so no, only after we are done. So how was our deployment? Um, deployed, cool, so let's just verify production, no, no HTTPS, as I mean, cool, uh, so at least um, no kittens died during this, good, so I need to go for today. This is a design issue that we need to fix, but uh, I need to go for today. Um, thanks for watching this uh, short split. And um, as I've been saying, I'm officially switching to weather driven development schedule. So whenever there is a weather uh, like this, I may show up. So again, um, thanks for joining and uh, see you next time.